hug. Oh. A very good morning to all our viewers, and you are watching Econ's News. I am Riz Booms. In this session, we are going to cover news on the IRs, short for uh, imaginary reindeers. Ooh, um. Christmas. Uh, uh, oh, wait. I mean, the integrated results. Yep, so prepare yourself for a full 15 minutes of fun with us here at Econ's News. Checks out the scene and the integrated results, namely Resort World Sentosa and Marina Bay Sands. Well, as we all know, the IRs have created many employment opportunities in many different sectors, leading to an increase in demand for more amenities and enhancing Singapore's tourism sector. So far, we've been given the professionals and government's perspective about the benefits of the IRs. But now, let us get the opinion of the layman, just like you and me. related to the tourism industry. Yeah. That's a very good answer, man. Thank oh, you thank so you, much for thank your you. time. No problem. Thank you. I think the IELTS are really necessary in Singapore. Well, I believe that it's crucial as it provides opportunities for various industries to come together and clinch business needs. Welcome back, viewers. Now we have with us a very, 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 very special guest. Let's put our hands together to welcome Professor Cedric Gryffindor from the London School of Economics. Thank you. So, Professor, what do you think about the new opening of the IRS and how have they affected the Singapore economy? Well, the openings of the IRS the opening of the IRs in Singapore is definitely an interesting endeavor worth thorough analysis. Mm -hmm. From the issue of the IR in Singapore and around the world, one can mine the many economic frameworks, one of which which I will explore are the microeconomic frameworks which involve concepts such as PED and YED, which I hope most of you know. Furthermore, one can also explore macroeconomic concepts such as the multiplier process issues dealing with employment and economic growth. So before we delve into these impacts brought upon by the IRs, allow me to first contextualize the setting up of the IRs in Singapore. This proposal was brought forward in uh, the end of 2004 by the government and it is a deviation from the normal policies that Singapore government has been introducing in the past few years. Singapore has earned itself as the title of a draconian fine city which is averse to many risks and threats, one of which is the social malady of profligate gambling. This problem traces its roots to the street gambling culture that was prominent in the 1970s and 80s, in the earlier years of the nation's independence. However, recently Singapore seems to have disregarded or discarded such former concerns to achieve economic growth by setting up the integrated resorts in such as the Resorts World Sentosa and Marina Bay Sands. Uh -huh. So the government seems to really have gone for the Darwinian pursuit of economic growth versus that of maintaining social stability. While, while the government has implemented certain measures to prevent the loss of social stability, one can be one knows that the Singapore government has chosen economic growth in that aspect. Oh boy, some of these children people. Well, now to talk about the economic impacts of the IR. The IR beckons as a treasure trove of economic opportunities for Singapore. Firstly, the IR will generate countless peak income receipts, totaling billions of dollars. According to Price Waterhouse Coopers, the Singapore conception is targeted to overtake the casinos in Australia and other Asia Pacific countries to make Singapore the second, just after Macau, in the casino business in APEC. Apart from, apart from the bountiful profit and income that will be generated, 
employment opportunities will be created as informal or I might say modest estimates by the Ministry of Trade in Singapore have placed about 40,000 job opportunities being created due to the implementation of, of the IR. These job opportunities uh, will thus increase income and bring about GDP growth for Singapore as well. Furthermore, there will be a multiplier effect of, uh, as, accord as in accordance to the Keynesian theory. The multiplier effect refers to the economic situation whereby inputs, such as in this case the injection of money to build the IRs, will, will have its benefits cascade down the wide spectrum of economic agents, thus benefit, benefiting many people. Um, oh, sorry, go on. So, the rule of thumb of multiplier effects is that small cities, in this case Singapore, you tend to have smaller multipliers that are less than 1.5. This is especially true in Singapore. However, with more critical and acute analysis, one has some reservations. Now I'll talk about two special effects, namely substitution and recapturing effects, which are important in how we view and in the perspectives of how we view the impacts of the IRs. Firstly, we talk about the substitution effect. The substitution effect refers to a situation measuring the level of spending on alternative goods and services apart from gambling in this case. This refers to the extent to which gambling pa gam casino patrons decrease the spending on other goods and services for gambling. While there have been little empirical studies and literature on this aspect of e economics, it places that um, the substitution effect of gambling is rather low. This means that even, with, even gambling patrons at casinos who often spend much money on alternative goods and services around them. For example, in an IR, uh, a patron to the casino may spend large amounts of money also in terms of shopping, food and dining in the area. Therefore, this also means a, large, a larger economic growth and benefits for Singapore. Furthermore, in the long run, beyond the infant stages which of the IR, which are still quite recent, one has to consider the recapturing effect, which refers to the ability of the IRs to continually and sustainably draw a crowd of consumers to consume its goods and services. So, how can one encapsulate or even measure the attractiveness or ability of the IR in wooing its customers consistently? This is an issue that the government as well as the nation has to consider in the long run amidst large competition from casinos around the world. Lastly, one can also consider the microeconomic concepts such as YED and PED. YED refers to the elasticity of income. It refers to the responsiveness of demand of a good or service, in this case the IR, due to a change in income. Given the backdrop of Singapore's economic growth recently, as it has recovered from a global sub-mortgage crisis, uh, it means that incomes are rising and this will have a definite impact on YED. Assuming that the uh, income elasticity of gambling is 1.5, meaning that for every 1% increase in income, you lead to a 1.5% increase in gambling spending. This serves as a useful guide to contextualize and construct our argument more accurately. This has also to be related to the backdrop of established leaders in the gambling industry, such as in Macau and Las Vegas. Against such stiff competition and saturation in the market, it is important that we consider the competition that Singapore is facing. On an ending note, there are of course social concerns that Singapore government has tried to address, such as the plausibility of increased crime rates, road maintenance, and other ancillary services, all of which has all of which entail certain economic costs or benefits. So the government has to carefully consider these impacts on a private and a social level and how the IR can be beneficial with minimal negative externalities. So steering away from any pessimistic viewpoints, one can only wait with bated breath as thousands flock to the IRs in search of recreation or just arrival or to induction some beta therapy.
but whatever it is, we can be sure that anyone going to the IR today will be bringing economic benefits to Singapore for, for years to come. Yes, thank you, Professor, for that analysis. You're welcome. Yes, and now for the breaking news. A rich foreign billionaire has bought all 2,500 apartments at Sentosa Cove. We are heading down there to interview him right now. So, now we are at RWS, and here we have your so money bags. Oh my god, it is such an honor to interview you, sir. I heard you have invested in all the apartments at Sentosa Cove. Is that true? And what made you do that? Well, well, a very good day to Econ's News. And I'm, as, and I'm sure as all of you know, I'm Maximus Moneybags, world famous multi billionaire. I've made incessant amounts of dollars from the stock market. I've built innumerable resorts and villas all over the world. And as soon as the papers are done, all the properties on San Jose Cove will belong to yours crew. Most impressive, Sir Moneybags, but our viewers are more interested in the burning question. What made you choose to invest in Sentosa Cove? Well, there's no need to be hasty. As you all know, I have a good nose for business. My instincts have taken me all over the world, from London to Cairo, and of course to Tokyo and Beijing. And then I read the headlines, Singapore IRS opened. Well, knowing a good opportunity when I see one, I immediately packed my bags for sunny Singapore and went straight to Sentosa. And what did I see? What did you see? Urbanization is its finest works. The quality and quantity of services is simply incredible. Hotels, suites, restaurants and clubs everywhere. It is truly a feast for the eyeballs. Ah, so you were attracted by these facilities? I was starstruck. The five-star restaurant will serve as a good alternative when my exclusive personal chef takes the day off. And the luxury retail shops will prove easy access to world-renowned brands such as, you know, Louis Vuitton and Gucci, making for splendid gifts for my many visit visitors. Yeah. Oh, it's just like you to have such a good eye. Ah, you flatter me, you flatter me. Such value and taste in location and amenities are few and far between. I'm looking forward to bringing my family to the much-acclaimed Sand Skies Park. A rooftop garden 200 meters in the air. Ah, what could be better than a cup of wine and with a, you know, lovely atmosphere under the starry night sky? Other than these world-class facilities, were there any major factors? Let's see. Well, I believe that Sentosa holds enormous potential, particularly, particularly as a holiday resort. As you all know, prices for housing on the island will no doubt rise quickly. As a matter of fact, a few of my fellow Dylan and friends, they already expressed interest in buying some of these properties. Wow. Yeah. And in no time, the property will be worth two to three times as much as they are now, if not more. Well, my projection is based on past experiences that there will be much price speculation, which will, as you all know, drive the prices up heavily. Profits will be inevitable, taking me onto the next step of becoming the number one billionaire in the world. Oh, you never cease to amaze us with your brilliant insight and wisdom. Do you have any closing words for our viewers? Thank you, thank you. Indeed, I do. Well, hello, Singapore. Let me just say that I am most impressed with your integrated resorts. Building them was the right step, but now you need to further expound and capitalize it in order to truly promote the country as an economic hub. To all young entrepreneurs out there, reach out for your dreams. The future is in your hands. Reach out and find success. Hi, sir. What's your name? Oh, good day, mate. Hi. Well, I'm James from Australia. Nice to meet you. May I ask you a question? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, you may. What do you expect of the IRC system? Well, uh, you know, I came from Australia and it's... I came from Australia and it's, uh, it's, it's a very nice place here. And yeah, there are, there's, there's a lot of stuff to do. And I definitely expect a very high caliber of facilities and services. And I think I'll enjoy myself here very much. And this concludes this week's episode.